The Lake Air Basin is, uh, is quite a large basin. It covers approximately a sixth of Australia and it's the largest internal draining basin in Australia. Because of that it's, and the arid landscape, it, it has some quite unique flora and fauna. Um, and so getting a better understanding of that is quite important for us to, to ensure that it's preserved in the future. We're sitting here in part of the Lake Air Basin, which is one of the, well, it's the largest internally draining catchment in the world. And it's one of the largest terminal lakes in the world and it's in great shape. There's no irrigation or very, very minor irrigation. The rivers are unregulated. We're talking about the last major dry land rivers left on the face of the planet that aren't severely impacted by humans. However, there are some current and future threats uh, which, which can potentially uh, affect this unique ecosystem. So some of those, for example, are we have some uh, in introduced um, Australian fish species and crayfish species that have, that have taken over much of the area that we've, been, uh, that we've been studying over the last few days. And those include the sleepy cod uh, and also the, the red core crayfish as well. As soon as you put a species from somewhere else into a system and it hasn't got controlling influences, it, they blossom in such numbers that they actually cause huge damage to other species that actually live here. In the future, some of the main impacts that we're predicting is potentially climate change. Um, there's a lot of unknown around what the climate change might bring in terms of this, this ecosystem. So these are the sorts of things that we'll be studying uh, into the future, and that's the, the, the main goal of the research that we're doing. We've had the Lake Air Basin Rivers Assessment process, which monitors and reports on the health of the system, and it's just so important that we do that because we two things, we can show how healthy the system is, but we can also notice if there's any changes and where we need to take action. It's important that we continue to gather information for this base on the ecosystems, because we, uh, we really do need to have a good understanding about what the ecosystem might look like in a changing environment. Um, so if we can some, get some, some basic information around the life history and, and how they react and respond to changing environment, we could potentially predict some of those changes into the future, such as climate change. The important thing is we need to use science and hard data to make decisions. But also the river and the system is an indicator of the overall basin, the catchment health. So if the river's crook, it's usually something happening outside running into it. So it's a good indicator of, of how our basin and land management is, is travelling. So that, that's why this project is really important. It's so easy to create harm that is very, very hard to fix, but it's also so easy to use hard data and the best information available and make sensible decisions for the long-term sustainability and just get it right. The rivers of the Lake Air Basin and the wetlands of the Lake Air Basin, are, they're iconic. There's no way of, other of describing them. Well, we're not going to get anywhere without it. If we don't have a, have a voice in what goes on, and that's with the industry, government and everything. If we don't have a voice, well, we're going to be out on the outside all the time, forever. And now is the best opportunity for us to do that. Story, but it's just so critical that we get it right now because we're in a unique position of knowing how important these rivers are and also having them in great shape, unlike nearly anywhere else in the world.